Going back to that style that I really, really love, the Atomic Age, that mid-century vibe. And this time I wanted to take a traditional bouquet of flowers and turn it into that Atomic Age clean, pure colors, straight up design, and use some paint chips as my materials. So let's go and see how it's done. I'm a big fan of the Atomic Age, like I told you earlier. I love the clean lines, the simplicity of it. So I decided let's try a collage using a, you know, a vase of flowers as my, my objects that I want to use for my finished piece. So I'm going to show you the first one that I did and I, I am going to admit it, it turned out okay, but it wasn't what I really wanted to do. It looks nice. I started out with these colors because the color palette is about the same as the mid-century look. But then once I started putting in my marker for my stems, it was, they were too fluid. They were moving and bending too much and that's really not the Atomic Age look. The actual flowers themselves were good. The colors that I used were good, but I wasn't really satisfied. So I thought, well, let's do it again. It's easy. I purchased these paint chips or what they're called and they were already cut into circles in a variety of color and a lot of them were that mid-century color that I like. If you don't have these, you can use a template, cut circles out and you cut your own circles out. I was fortunate. So let's get my two blues that I need and I'll show you. I measured them out and they're good size. The biggest thing with these is they have a paint coating on them and you're going to use a bit more glue than normal. Oh, I forgot to show you one more thing on my trial. So I'm going to use this so I can space it. Let's see. I already have glue on my fingers. We just started. All right, around we go. And again, to the edges, close but not too close because as you push down, it will ooze. You use your paintbrush as a tool. Now, you will have to go back and press these down. I suggest using a paper towel as it will catch any of the oozing, so to speak. So we'll keep that handy. Since I have this, it's perfect. Now, if you noticed on this one again, these fade into the background. They don't stand out. So I figured I would use a black background. So when they're put down, they're amazing looking. Let me show you how we do that. You're just going to cut your flower shape out, put it over it. Actually, let's do this. Let's make it easy on herself. Once you've cut your shape, glue it directly onto your black. I found this deep, deep, deep black. And you don't want a huge outline, but you want it. And here I am repeating myself. Move the paper and just use your scissors to open and close. Cut that off. Let's keep this off to the side. Simple. And see how it highlights it? So let's do the others. Scoop my glue. And the good part of these is it's the same color on each side, so you don't have to whoopsie worry about putting the wrong side down. All right, let's streamline this. Being prepared and having all of your pieces ready to where at the final moment you're just gluing or adhering your pieces down definitely creates a much more pleasant and easier way to do it. And again, if you have to do a trial or two just to get it right, well, then that's the way it's going to be. That's how we learn. That's how I learn. Get an idea, try it out, and then go for it. You'll find that you learn every time. Let's get those out of the way. I've actually got this here, so I'm going to 
clean my fingers off, dry them off, because as you can see, I have <laughs> glue on my paintbrush. Now the vase on the other one was a little too complex, so I created this. And I'm gonna put it right there. This is almost like a horizon line or a table or whatever, so I'm gonna line that up there. So we've got one, two, three. And like I was talking about, I did not like the way I did my lines. We have to keep it centered because we don't want them coming down and my lines are going to be straight. So I have to move these around a bit again, creating a puzzle. So what I did is I took strips of black paper and strips of white and slide this over here so you can see how I did it. And what I'm going to do is take my stiff paintbrush. I don't think I told you this time that it's the best. And I'm just going to go down and go that way, flip your brush over and go down. The reason I do it on a colored piece of paper is so that I can see where the glue goes. Let's get this over here. Move it up. I have to move this over a little bit. All right, not cooperating. There we go. And come down. And then you have a strip. And I thought that these strips would be perfect as my stems. So I'm going to use this little one first. After I put my flowers down, let's do this. Let's get these down. And again, now you've got double and you're going in between these. So the glue is going to have to touch the white paper as well. One, I'll move them up a little bit. Oh, see how that's coming up? You have to keep pressing these down. They're thick. And remember, anything you do is worth it here. So there's one. Move these here. I'll move them a little more centered. I'm kind of glopping the glue on, and that's all right because we're going to be pushing these down more than once. Uh, let's do this again. Balance you don't want them flying all over the place or have a huge empty space. Think about it. I did lay them down first, and now I'm going for it. We didn't want two of each because then you have like a silly pattern, not a silly pattern, but a pattern that um, doesn't create interest. All right, one up here. I can always go back and add more glue, but I believe that pushing them down will do the trick. Oh, I think I got a little glue on the front here. I did. Time to wipe my hands again. I'm going to be putting black over that. I wet them and then I dry them. We are so close. And put some stems in. There, this is a little group. All right, push, push. This will take a lot of glue. We have a lot of glue, not to worry. Notice I'm not going right to the edge because it will ooze. These are things you may have heard me say before, but definitely worth repeating. Now, I want the, there is a shorter piece on the top. I wanted to make sure that was right. Center it the best I can. Lower it and press. Now I can start doing this. Actually, I'm going to lift this up so I can slide those under. Make them a little bigger than you need. Put your glue on them. It's easier when you have a small piece like this to slide it on the paper so that you don't get it on your hands. I'm going to slide it under here. I'm going to lift this up. Let's do it again. I did make a bunch of them so I can just start cutting. This one is not going to be too long. Let's do that first. Like I said, prepare. The only longer ones I'm going to need are here. Let's do that one first. You'll find your own rhythm, your own way of doing things. And I'm thinking to myself, I put a lot of glue on those flowers already, which means it's going to dry fast. 
slide it, lift it. I'm going to keep this lifted. See a little bit of glue there, but that's okay. And this guy had a little tiny one. Lift it. This one I'm just going to do like this. All right. Again, clean my fingers. They're getting gluey. Well, I'm glad that this is lifting up on the edges. I'm going to move this over a little bit. I'm not real fond of that right there. Okay, there's that one. And this one, no, that's too, too long. Well, let's try it. Can't say no unless you've tried it. I'll just tuck it under a little bit and lift this up. So far, I'm already happier with the way this looks compared to my first one because I want to do this over here. I think I'm going to do this over here so that it doesn't look so straight, straight, straight. Again, put it down. All right, I'm just going to get busy here now. Lift it up. Stick it. There we go. Let's see. So we need that little guy. I think we can use this. I'm thinking if I can lift this up, which I think I can, I'm going to put a long one. Let's try something new. To there. I'm going to cut it right here. Get that in. All right. Lift it. Okay, that looks much better. One more little one here. I don't want them to look like popsicles or something like that. So I'm going to pull this one all the way down. Lift this side up. Measure. And cut. They won't once I put the details on. That's, that's like the finishing touch that's going to make it amazing. All right, one more here. Under, lift, under. All right, boom. I'm going to take my towel, give everything a good press. So now that this is down, and you're going to see how it pops up, you're going to have to keep pressing these because they're extremely thick. This is a really beautiful combination. Oh, excuse me. Leaning in to get my others. Now, I have a ruler that I need to use. If not, I can just try to do it on my own. All right, let's just... You know what? I'm going to make my own ruler. I'm going to use this. This was my trial. I tried everything out. I drew out my flowers. I did my research. So let's use these. I'm going to just make the bottom a little dark. This is fine. And I'm going to do the other as well. And remember, once you draw on these, it's going to, um, it's going to be a little wet, so you don't want to be rubbing your hands. That is another thing I've learned. Start on the top and work down. So from here, I'm just going to go up, lift it, up, lift it. Notice I'm checking where I'm going. And then I'm going to put my little dots. I'm always saying a little dot changes everything. Simple, right? Up. Up and since I have my stem there, I'm going to go off to the side. You'll make adjustments on the way. I think I want these bigger. Never ever think that you're done. You can always do something different. But these are kind of fun. I'm just going to do a circle, a big circle, a circle. A big circle. Not big enough. You want them similar because they're the same flower. And another circle. Now this will be a little easier because I can go across. And I'm actually going to stay inside. Lift, otherwise you will smudge. Mid-century atomic age 
it was all straight lines when it came to the detail all the way across. All right. Usually I have a clear eraser so I can a eraser ruler so I can see, but I'm just winging it. Use what's around you. Perfection is for machines, not for us. One. Almost done here, and everyone's going to have fun doing this. Their own styles. Research. Find what designs you like. And then go for it. Hmm, this one I think I'll do this. And I am looking at some drawings that I had done before, and that one that I didn't really like so much that I learned from. Hmm. Let's make this a little thicker, and then I'm going to do this. Which means I just realized I need another one. I just found that I need to put this under there. See? Never think you're finished until you're finished. Lift this. Okay, lift this. <laughs> My lifting is getting minimized. Boom. All right. And let's see, I don't want them curved. I'm gonna go straight. So get my faux ruler. I want five on these. One, two. Now since that's there, I'm gonna go two in between. Uneven numbers, I don't know why. Like even in designs, they tend to really make it look a little bit better. One, two, three, four. Well, I'll sneak one in there. All right. Giant ones this time. We want them to stand out. And it's easier because it's that bright yellow. And now that I've done this, I'm going to change something else. Trust your instincts. This needs to be thicker. And this needs to be more of a, there you go. See, look at the difference. Tiny little tweaking with your pen changes everything. So there you go. You have this beautiful atomic age, spectacular looking collage that you could frame and hang on a wall almost anywhere. Have fun with this. Thanks for joining me today. Go to artwithmisslinda.com for more classes.